welcome to Fast Physics, and we're going to be looking at cyclotrons today. So these are really, really useful machines that we use. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now some key points about magnetic fields, just as a very quick recap. Magnetic fields cannot alter the speed of a particle. Now that is because their field is perpendicular to the force. So if you look at using your left hand rule, just have a quick look at that again. Uh, see our previous videos if you don't quite understand that. And so because the field is perpendicular to force, no work can be done on a perpendicular plane, which means a magnetic field cannot alter speeds of particles. So if we're trying to accelerate a proton, we have to use this machine called a cyclotron. Now, as it says at the bottom, we can use this in proton therapy and we use them in hadron colliders. Uh, so CERN uses a kind of example of this. So if we have a quick look, remembering our equation from before, this one here, I've rearranged it so that we have V as our um, focus basically and V is the radius times by the magnetic field times by the charge but di uh, divided by the mass. Now thinking about that if we have a proton that is in a field the mass must stay constant we can't change the mass of a proton the field it is in must stay constant because I'm not going to start changing the magnetic field of my cyclotron that's going to be way too expensive and the charge that stays on um, of my proton, that must stay constant because I can't change the charge of a proton. So therefore, if I want to speed up my particle, it is dependent on the radius. If I want to make it go faster, the radius must go up to increase the velocity. Now, the main thing we have to kind of think about here is if we can't use a magnetic field, how on earth can we speed up a particle? So the best way to do it is to use electric fields. So what we first have to do is we charge this gap. Okay, so we have a gap in what we call our Ds. So these guys are the Ds. A super original name by scientists yet again. And this red thing in the middle is our source. So that's where we're getting our protons from. Now, thinking about this, uh, as I've mentioned before, we have our field coming out of the page. So what we want us to do, what, what we want is that this source is going to go round in a bigger and bigger radius until it can fire out of this section here. So it comes popping out here. Now, to do this, we have to try and accelerate our proton in one direction. So the easiest way for us to do that is if we first make one side positive, the other side negative, it will be repelled from the positive and attracted to the negative. So it will begin to accelerate. So the proton will accelerate into the field. Now you have a charge moving in an electric field so you've got a current so using our left hand rule this would cause this particle to do this now the problem we have when it hits this point is that's now positive this is negative it's not going to want to accelerate across so we would have to flip the polarity of our charged area in between the d's and that's got to happen every half a loop in order to cause our particle to accelerate and start doing this so that it can be eventually fired out of the cyclotron and be useful. Like that. So if this is to happen, the frequency in which the protons pass across that gap has to match the frequency in which the charges are flipping on the D like this. So going from positive to negative and back over and over again. So to do this, um, we obviously know that speed is distance divided by time, which means time is distance divided by speed. Okay. But our distance is going to be the circumference of the circle that this proton is going round in. So our distance is two pi r. Now, if we now substitute this back in, t is two pi r over v. Therefore, we already know what v is. We've said v up is what this is up here. So if we substitute this v into this equation, what we get instead is t equals two pi 
R M over B Q R. Now we've got two like terms, one on the top, one on the bottom, so we can substitute these guys out, which means our equation that we get at the end is this, which thinking about that is actually amazing because 2 pi, these are constants, we can't change them, the mass of our proton can't change, the field it's in can't change, and the charge can't change. So time is completely independent of the radius in which it's going in. Now, that's, that is really almost counterintuitive to your mind. You think it's got to travel further, so surely it's going to take more time to do so, but it's going to be traveling faster, so it kind of counteracts this. So we can then use t as 1 over f to match this time period to the frequency in order to make the frequency that these charges need to flip match the frequency that the protons are going to be crossing that gap. So we can cause our alternating current here to match the frequency in which we need that proton to be crossing that gap. So. Now you know how a cyclotron works. Congratulations. Um, next video, we are going to be moving back on with magnetic fields. We're going to be looking at how they act sinusoidally. And after that, we're going to be looking at transformers. See you soon. Bye.